Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Planet IMEX, the October edition. My name is Natasha Richards. I'm the Senior Advocacy and Industry Relations Manager at IMEX, and I will be your moderator. During the session, I encourage you to use the chat as much as you like, but please do use the Slido platform for questions. I will be monitoring the questions, so please forgive me if I look away occasionally as I'm working with several screens. You can ac access Slido to the left of the video feed on a desktop and below the video feed on a mobile device. Our session today will begin with a short video followed by a live segment where we will be able to see Michael's artistry in action. <laughs> really impressive, especially for the IMEX team as the subjects where our chairman Ray, our CEO Karina and the fabulous Vegas skyline. Now, without further ado, our speaker today is a world traveller, an artist whose medium is coffee and who has created over 10,000 individual portraits and counting. It's my pleasure to introduce Michael Breach. Hello, hey. Michael. Hey, Welcome. how's it going? <laughs> All good. But before we start, Michael, I must mention that we have three really lucky Instagram competition winners who are now going to have their images recreated in Latte. Oh, let's do it. Absolutely. Deborah, Kate, and Thuy? Thuy? <laughs> I'm not sure. I didn't actually practice the punch in the pronunciation. <laughs> I love this photo. It's funny because I saw, I saw her entering through my... Um... Instagram account and stories and I was just like, all right, this is, this is going to be great. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love the hair. So who am I starting with? Are we doing, are we starting with Deborah, Kate? I think you can go in whichever order you like, Michael. You are the artiste. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll start with Thai because it is the morning and I kind of get the bedhead myself. So, you know, I think that, that'll work out, right? Absolutely. I had the bedhead earlier, but I... I've managed to rein things in a little. <laughs> no, it looks quite good. Yeah. See, I kind of just pull it off as well, whatever. <laughs> it's, I think here we call it the tousled look. Oh. Well, nice, nice. So I'm getting my milk froth right now. I am so happy to be here. I love working with IMAX. It's really been like one of the best experiences I've had in my career, like, you know, working with them the last few years, especially like, you know, in real life in Vegas. Absolutely. So as, as the milk does its thing, Michael, why don't you tell us what got you started? So honestly, what got me started was a mistake. It was an accident. I was trying to like learn regular latte art and 
you know, I was able to do all the normal designs. I mean, this is before that. I drew a little heart in the cup and it ended up looking more like an onion. And then at that point, I'm going to turn my camera down here so you can see what I'm doing. And let me just change my camera. So an onion really was the beginning. <laughs> it all started with an onion, yes. And it's kind of funny. It, it was just like, looked like an onion. And so I drew a little face in it. And you know, I've always been an artist, like my whole life. It's always sort of been part of my identity anyway. It's just kind of growing up as a kid, I was always the, you know, good at drawing. My parents always bought me like every year for Christmas or whatever holidays, I'd always just get sketchbooks, a lot, you know, art materials. And little did I know that they were all waste because I did it all with the coffee. They should have just been getting me coffee this whole time. But And then after the time. onion, Michael, when you, when you, so the, so the heart became an onion and then what did you do next? So yeah, I drew, so I drew like a little face in it and I went and put it on Facebook and what happened was they tried to tag it as a person and it was just like little shadowy face. You could actually see it on my Instagram feed. I actually posted it semi recently and yeah, it just looks like a little face on Mars kind of and that's the really what triggered it and that's sort of when I had this sort of vision that Oh, maybe I could actually do this and make this a thing. I, I went online and looked around and to see if anyone else was doing anything like this. And this was in like 2011 and I didn't see anything at all. So that kind of really inspired me to, to really think, Hey, maybe I can be the person that does this. And that's what I set out to do. And pretty much every decision I made from then on sort of was like a decision to, uh, towards that goal, you know? And Michael, for the benefit of our audience, are you, you're actually using a little bit of food coloring on the side there, aren't you? Just oh. for the accents and highlights. Oh yeah. So let me go on about what I'm actually doing. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. yes, I know I just kind of do this stuff and I'm just, to me it's like so casual, but other people are like, what is he doing? Um, so right now I have a little bit of food color here. I use coffee, I use food color as a mix of both. This is just some sort of AmeriColor, it's gel paste. So a little goes a very long way. Um, and I use that just because I get lots of low lights and I can actually have a little more control over what I want to do with it. If I want to do more complex designs with shading, hence a portrait, you know, I really want these portraits to be, um, you know, very complex. And they are, and they're so lifelike because you, you did, you kindly did mine in our rehearsal and I was so blown away. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. It really was very, very impressive. No, and I, the, and the, so this is obviously not a technical term, but the stick that you're using, <laughs> um, yeah. is that really sharpened to a specific um, thickness that you need? Yeah, they're like, they're like my weapons, you know? I use them. I actually, so I actually just cut the tips of them, yeah, with scissors. I mean, it's not really, not really anything too complicated. People will actually think I use these crazy different tools and they make weird kits of little metal instruments at different points. And, you know, none of those really suit me. And they, this is honestly what works. It's a little stick that, um, you know, they usually find on meatballs somewhere. So that's always, <laughs> that's always what I've used. Well, that's <laughs> much, much more beautiful than a meatball, I tell you. Oh, totally. I think she'd appreciate that statement as well, right? Absolutely. So, so we're capturing the expression here. I love drawing people with expressions just because it's not just like a mug shot, you know, literally a shot in a mug, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a thing. Very good. <laughs> so, Michael, Actually, tell us a little bit more um, about how you managed to make this God-given talent into a career. Yeah. So a lot of it just had to do with social media, really. I mean, I started early in the game and it's kind of funny because I was, I didn't really know it would be such a big thing. I mean, I set out to do that. And sometimes you just kind of have like these sort of aspirations and these goals and you don't really know that they're going to happen or not, you know, obviously, but um, yeah, I started an Instagram page and then I ended up getting a ton of followers on that. And then um, from that following, I ended up getting the attention of a lot of press. So I've been on uh, Good Morning America and Food Network and uh, Today Show. And so, and those things kind of happened pretty quickly, but I mean, I still had to work my regular job because you don't actually get like, you know, paid to go on those shows. People thought I was like, 
you know, people call me up. They're like, oh, like you must be living it up. I'm like, no, I stole, <laughs> stole my friend's cat. I was just on TV. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and then eventually, you know, I really kind of got into the business side of it. And it's a lot of fun actually learning how to market yourself in different ways. And it's and it could be kind of a hobby in itself. But it must be lovely to be able to market yourself doing something that you really love. You know, I mean, oh you're not gosh. selling insurance here. So I, no. and no offense to anyone that does. <laughs> Um, you know, don't, we don't want to uh, cast dispersions. And, you know, so if we think of life as a journey, Michael, mm -hmm. this wonderful talent of yours must have taken you to some fabulous places. Oh, man. I will say I've been, I've been from, to so many places doing this. I've been in the backstage of fashion shows. I've been um, in the middle of like a ski resort. I've been at Aspen Food and Wine. I've done, you know, I've been to the, like the palace in Kuwait, Prince of Kuwait hired me once. I've been to Joe Jonas's backyard doing this for him and his friends. So, you know, it's, it's been really like a big, big blessing to be able to do this. And yeah, I, I, you know, I think I'm very lucky. I think I had one of the most fun jobs in the world. And, and what did the Prince of Kuwait want you to do? Or, or can you not divulge? <laughs> oh, no, that's not the secret. He, so he was just opening a cafe and he, he literally, he, he emailed me and he goes, you know, I contacted you. My people contacted you and me because we did all kinds of research and you are literally the best in the world. And I was, that was the best sort of validation wow. I had ever gotten from anybody was that. The Prince of Kuwait straight up just said I was the best in the world. And I was just like, wow, okay, that's, that's, okay. <laughs> that's, yeah, you, you, you yeah. arrived. You no have real, arrived. <laughs> yeah, no real words for that when somebody says they've had people scour the world. I'm going to take a nice photo of this so she has it. And this, this looks and great. I believe it's pronounced Tui. 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 I got you, Tui. Yeah. Yeah, I, I apologize to you for pronouncing your name so horribly earlier. <laughs> so beyond the Prince of Kuwait, who else would you say have been some of your most interesting or favorite clients? See, I did, I've done them for Mike Tyson, uh, Toby mm -hmm. McGuire, Tyra Banks. That was a really fun one. This is behind like a fashion show. Cause I ended up doing a lot of fashion events, funny enough. It seems like a... It's like a thing with um, that kind of crowd. They really want to, but it really depends. I mean, I do all kinds of events. It could be the, it could be a fashion show. It could be like, a, you know, an insurance claims conference. I do everything, like for real. Like I do everything. It could be, it could be like a baby supplies trade so what, show. What are you doing in an insurance conference? What are they asking you to recreate in your cup? So for insurance conferences. You know, it's kind of funny. Let me let me change my camera back. So for insurance conferences, it's like I end up drawing a lot of people's spouses and children because they don't want to see themselves and they're usually away from their family. So in that way, it's kind of a cool way to connect with people and I kind of get their story as well. You know, we, we sort of chat it up and they're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, they always, I, you know, it's funny. I sometimes make people choose between their kids. <gasps> oh, that's a cardinal sin. You're not meant to do that. Yeah. All the parents will profess that they don't have any favorites, but then they'll give you a name pretty quick, right? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, they usually end up getting the dog. So. Oh, yes. Well, the dog is safe, or the cat, or unless the cat, they have several the animals, dog. obviously. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's, but dogs are so much fun to draw, too, because people really just get into that. So, Michael, just to say, if we don't have time to do both of the pictures, will you make sure, um, I'm sure you will, but if you don't, will you make sure that that picture is um, put on your Instagram and so that the, the winner will be able to see it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I can. I'm actually okay, going to work on the next one now. Brilliant. I can hustle through these. I can do these. So <laughs> oh, well, I don't want to ruin your amazing work. Oh no, we're fine. So while we're doing the, while you are doing the lucky winner, can I ask what your IMAX journey has been? Oh, so how it's been working with IMAX. So really what happened was, I also want to think that the Vendry had me here as well, and they've been very helpful as well. So, but with IMAX, 
it was like one of my first real big gigs and where, you know, this, this conference was in the middle of Vegas and they had, um, you know, they rented out like a club and Cirque du Soleil and all of these, I mean, it was really, really like quite a, quite a gig, you know, it's one of those ones that I'll always remember because it was just, it was one of those ones where I really felt like I had arrived. And, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. And everyone was just so nice and, I mean, I had my cards out. I couldn't keep my cards out long enough because everybody was just like, you know, having me at their events afterwards because literally, I mean, I was getting emails that day to do these, do events. And it was one of the best, best things I could have, you know, done in my career really, because honestly being a Lazi artist, I mean, it's awesome for all events and things, but people don't really know exactly I exist because it's not exactly like a conventional thing that people already do. Like, you know, people already have heard of a magician or, a, you know, a trivia, a game show host or all these other things, but they haven't really heard of me because there's only really one of me. So there's a, yeah, there's absolutely. a so there's like a pro and a con to that in a way. So we've had a question in, Michael, from uh, Slido. I knew this one would be coming. So what happens when you make a mistake? So if I make a mistake, like say I did that, I could just sort of kind of roll over it a little bit with the foam. And actually I can kind of just smudge it over and it ends up being shading. So that's sort of how I do it. That's how I deal with little mistakes. And also, I mean, there's no real way to tell if it's a mistake because there's, there's not very any other people that are like, well, I'm a lot artist too. You made a mistake. <laughs> well, and, and everything is intentional, isn't it? It's it's part of the beauty of the medium that you're working, isn't, isn't it? I mean, I don't make mistakes. It's just, no. Um, Someone yeah. would like to know if the coffee stays warm. And yeah. Can you drink it afterwards? Absolutely. I mean, I think it stays as warm as, you know, when you go to a cafe and there's like a blogger there taking a photo of their leaf, you know, they, they take enough pictures by the time I'd be done with my art, you know. <laughs> and um, a great question, Michael. Who would you still like to meet and that's still on your list to create a portrait of? Who would I still like to meet? Probably, I'm trying to think. That's a really good question because like all the people I want to meet keep like passing. But oh no, well maybe was, you better not say their name no. because you know, well, this was, is not I a good know. year. Exactly, <laughs> it, was, it was, exactly. Like it was David Bowie when I first started because I lived in New York and he lived in New York and I'd done events where like, he would have been there like fashion shows and like backstage things. So that was one of the, that was sort of my, um, he would have been my ultimate person I wanted to meet doing it. Oh event. yeah. And he had so many faces, didn't he? Bowie. I mean, he reinvented oh, himself, you know, more times than Madonna, I think. Oh yeah. No I mean, disrespect to Madonna. I wanted to reinvent him in coffee, you know? Absolutely. And do you, do you, um, you know, do you draw with charcoal or do you paint? Are there any other mediums you work in beyond coffee? No, not at all, really. This is my main, this is my main thing because it's just, I want to get better and better and better at it. And I, you know, I, I'm always kind of trying to stretch the limits of it. And I do experiment time to time though. Like I'll play with like Procreate on iPad. I don't know if anybody here has that program, but it is a lot of fun. And if you do have an iPad Pro, it's, I mean, you can really do whatever you want on it. So. We have our next winner. Oh, amazing. That looks yeah. brilliant. Um, someone would like to know if you can work in other mediums, say Guinness, for example. <laughs> I actually, I've done Guinness. I've been, I was once traveling in Chicago for a gig and I was kind of bored one night and I sort of went to, there was just some bar near my hotel and I had my, my colors, my food color with me and I just kind of did something on Guinness and within like, Five ten minutes, I had like a group of people standing around me watching me draw on the Guinness, and then like, funny enough, someone contacted me a month later for some event they were doing. <laughs> like so, that. Michael, I have a question that's come in to ask if you actually teach classes. I do actually. So, what? That's actually one of the things that I have done during all of this whole situation for you know, for my clients is what they've done is they've sent these little kits out to their clients. And it's literally like a little kit that looks like one of these. It's just like a milk frother. 
on like yeah, Amazon. I have one of those. I have yeah. one of those, yeah. They're great. And I've actually been able to sort of take those. There's like a little kit. And we'll we put, I'll help them put it together and they send it to this group of clients. And then I, I show them how to make a couple simple designs. And that's a really fun interactive thing instead of just like just to show that it's a you know they get to be part of it and they actually get a a skill as well and you know i'm hoping i can at least help someone get a new uh, hobby for being absolutely uh, absolutely michael we won't have time to probably come to the end of your third creation so again please make sure it's available on your instagram imex will reshare it so that the third winner uh, doesn't miss out on her beautiful portrait. Oh, she definitely will not. I have it ready. No, right they're, they're gorgeous. You definitely wouldn't want to miss that. And final question, what is your favorite coffee shop? And I know that's going to be somewhere in LA, right? Yes. My favorite coffee shop in Los Angeles is a little place called Minati's. And it is, it's in Venice Beach. And they have these, oops, just taking a photo for our, <laughs> so yeah, they have these really good, like different, like cold brew concoctions. I really like cold coffee, ironically enough, because I, I guess when I go out, I try to get stuff that I can't just make at home. So of course, absolutely. cold brew that's been sitting in a toddy bag for like eight hours. That's, <laughs> that's what I go There's for. nothing wrong with an iced coffee. Yeah. Michael, you are a genius oh, in, in coffee. Absolutely. It's a privilege to watch you work. It's a privilege to talk to you. And please you. don't forget that third image to go onto Instagram. So I'd like to thank you at this point for sharing your exceptional talent with us and to everybody for joining us. This session has been recorded and it will be available on demand soon. I hope that everyone will enjoy the rest of our Monday Fun Day programming. And please don't forget to have a good exploration of our wonderful underwater reef on planet IMEX. But from now, it, until next time, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from wonderful Michael. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.